So you have Solomon's temple that was built and uh, destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar or under King Nebuchadnezzar. And when he carried away Israel into Babylon, okay. And after 70 years were up, they returned back. And um, they saw the temple after, it, after when they returned back, the temple was rebuilt. And the elders who saw the temple, the, the temple before it was destroyed, saw the temple also after it was renovated or rebuilt. And they were sad about it because it wasn't as great as the old temple. So he, so he, uh, so the Most High told the prophet Haggai, told him all to be strong, gave him something to, uh, I guess, cheer him up, uh, prophetic. So he told Haggai, you know, basically that uh, you saw the temple in its in its former glory, and now this one doesn't look as good. But then right after that, he tells him that um, that temple would be the temple that all the wealth would come back to, all the wealth of Israel would come back to. Um, I told myself I wouldn't go read no scripture. I always do that, but there's no way I can go in here and not actually quote from it. You can kind of see where it's going. He said, who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And now you see it now in comparison with it. Is it not in your eyes as nothing? See this saying it's, it's not as good as the old temple. Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua. Uh, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. And be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord. And work, for I am with you. So, um, he tells them he's still with them since they left Egypt. Okay, now here's the point. He says, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with glory. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former. And in this place, I will give peace, says the Lord. So what he's saying is that that temple that they're rebuilding, even though it's not as glorious as the original temple, it's more glorious than the original temple because of what it stands for. He says, as a rubable, I will make it like a signet ring for you. So we're going to honor, we're going to um, remember Zerubbabel. Okay, we're going to remember them rebuilding that temple. That is significant. Um, and it literally says that that temple will be there for when the, when the uh, Gentiles return, the wealth of Israel. Not only the wealth of Israel, but the Israelites themselves. Um, a good portion of this is, is spelled out in Isaiah 60. Um, it says the ships of Tarshish will come first. Bring your sons and daughters from afar. This is literally telling us that um, the uh, Gentiles will bring back the wealth into that particular temple. So that temple has to be standing. Okay, so we're here in Isaiah 60. It's really elaborate on um, it says the Gentiles shall come to your light, the kings of brightness to your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see, they all gather to you. They come to you. Your your sons shall come from afar. And your daughters shall be nursed at your side. And you shall see and become and you shall see and become radiant and your heart shall swell with joy because of the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you okay the multitudes of camels shall cover your land the dromedaries of Meridian of Midian and Ephah and all those from Sheba shall come they shall bring gold and incense and they shall proclaim Proclaim praises to the Lord, and the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to you. 
the rams of Nebaioth shall minister to you. They shall ascend with acceptance upon what? My altar. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Okay, so what he's telling you is that the wealth of the Gentiles and the wealth of Israel that was stolen and the Israelites are going to be brought back to that temple to where he shows his glory. Okay. Surely, surely the coastlands, surely the coastlands shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish shall come first to bring your sons from afar, their silver, their gold with them to the name of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel because he has glorified you. The sons of foreigners shall build up your walls and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath, I struck you. But in my favor, I have had mercy on you. Therefore, your gates shall, op shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night. So what? So that the wealth, so that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in procession. For the nation and kingdom that does not serve you shall perish, and all those nations shall be utterly ruined. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the pine, the box tree together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Also, the sons of those who afflicted you shall come bowing to you, and those who despise you shall prostrate shall prostrate, prostrate at the soles of your feet and they shall call you the city of the Lord Zion of the Holy One of Israel uh, so that, that's right there is telling you when it says glorify the place of, the place of my sanctuary uh, what he's talking about is the temple where he shows his glory and that's where he showed his, his glory presented himself and to Ezekiel when he gave Ezekiel the command of how to build the temple told Ezekiel how to build the temple, how to divide up the land, how to how to um, um, set up the priest, set up the sanctuary, how the temple was to be built, and everything. So the temple that, that was built in Zerubbabel's day is the, is the vision that Ezekiel saw before it had happened while they were still in captivity. Ezekiel got this vision. This is not a vision of a future temple. He literally is of a future in our future temple, okay? He's literally giving commands on how to um, set up officers when they come in and how to divide up the land and how the temple should be set up, all of that. Um, and that temple's still standing. Because um, we know that the real the real Jerusalem, which is in Peru, um, is uh, Palenque, the Temple Palenque. If you look at the um, just for some historical backing, um, the 18th volume of the Foreign Quarterly Review, page 61, the Explorer measures the temple. They they look at the makings of the temple in Palenque when they got here. The invaders got here. And they basically were, they basically said in comparison to the temple of Ezekiel, it's identical. As if it were, as if it were stolen. And a lot of the stuff they said about what we were doing, the customs and stuff that we were doing, they said, well, it's just like the Jews. Maybe they stole it. You know, um, a lot of them were saying, hey, these are the people uh, trying to put stuff together. And then they, all the, the writings that they had, the stuff was swept under the rug. So, but anyway, so thinking about that temple still being able to be, still having to be here, being built, um, there's some historical evidence. Okay. Um, but the, the, that's, it's just very important that that temple is to be standing once. Um, once Israel comes back into the land, uh, because it's said that that's where all the the wealth of the Gentiles and the and the and the wealth from Israel come back. The silver is mine, he said. The gold is mine. 
Um, so why am I saying this? Well, because when you go to your New Testament, you go to Matthew 24, which I always bring this up because the context of this chapter is people like to pick a part at it, don't include the whole chapter in it. But in the beginning of it, what they what what was said was that the disciples were looking at the temple and he and then Jesus told the disciples, not one stone will be left upon another. Right? And then they said, well, when will these things be? And what is the sign of your coming? So they, they, they parallel the sign of his coming with the destruction of the temple, which should have been what? The temple that was rebuilt. It wasn't Solomon's temple. Shouldn't have been. Then you have another problem on your hands. Um, so he said the temple would be destroyed. Not one stone would be left upon another. Supposedly this took place in 70 AD in the fake Jerusalem, which there's uh, ruins over there from a temple, which there's still stones left upon another, but that's neither here nor there. The point of the matter is, Jesus said that that temple would be destroyed. 70 AD says that temple was destroyed. Uh, problem is that couldn't be the same temple. You guys may be talking about something over there in Africa, but down here in Palenque, we still have the temple, which is identical to the temple in Zerubbabel's day to the temple that Ezekiel prophesied about, which was going to happen soon. Um, so you have a problem um, with this temple. Is the temple still standing? Yes, the Haggai is true, and Jesus is a lie. Has the temple been destroyed? Has it? Well, then Jesus may be right, partially. And the rest of... Uh, the prophets are a lie, or Haggai is a lie. So which one is it? 